Spirit that you're anointing now comes and rests upon Jeremy and Carissa and on Emily and on Tyler in the name of Jesus. We undergird them with our love. We undergird them with our faith. We declare that their best days are in front of them. Hallelujah, Father. Strengthen them for the days ahead. We say that good news, Christian church, will thrive in the name of grow. In the name of fulfill its purpose, its destiny, its call. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, your best blessings now upon those faithful servants, Joe and Linda. Oh, Father, your best surround them and overtake them. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise for their lives and their faithfulness. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, for those of you who don't know, uh, Joe and Lindy D'Angelo launched us. Amen. I got born again in that ministry. You all wouldn't be here today. If I had not gone born again, would you guys would you would not be here. This ministry would not exist. Some of you wouldn't be healed. Come on, now. Come on. some of you wouldn't be as blessed as you are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we give glory, we give honor, we thank God Amen. for those that are here in the mission field in Connecticut. Amen. 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 Praise God forever. Glory to God. I, I, I'm about to have me some church. <laughs> Listen, you know when the devil comes and starts to mess. Amen. This is not the first time that we were getting ready to go on a regional retreat and something mechanical went at the house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember having an air conditioning company show up the day we were leaving to go to Pennsylvania. Yeah, they said $500 should be a good start. Yeah, good start. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a good start. It was a good start. I just said, Jesus, you got mail. By the time we got home, we had to pay. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, you better get a hold of that. It's time, it's time for the, the reaper to overtake the sower. Right. Right. Amen. Ha Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you yeah. better sit down. We better strap in. Unless you want to stand and we'll have some church. Because we can do that. Because you're all looking at me like a bunch of cows looking at a new gate. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, the kingdoms of this earth belong to God and his Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I say the kingdoms of this earth belong to God and to his Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I know some of you are a little wrung out from last night. Some of you are a little sore from last night. <laughs> a lot of dancing going on. Well, I'm not going to call it. I think Ken Soraya and Tyree were the only two that were dancing. <laughs> the rest of us was just white boy rhythm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, but we thank God for Sean and Christy. I, you know, I'm so used to calling her Chrissy, now I'm tripping over it, because I called her Kristen all day yesterday, because that was her request. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we rejoice. Amen. 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 That they uh, kicked off their life together. Amen. Yesterday. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Mom, Dad, y'all doing okay today? Amen. We know it's official, because I signed the marriage license this morning, so it, it, it's official. Uh, listen. It, they're out. <laughs> uh, two to go. <laughs> Listen, if you want to get around somebody, come on, who has rock steady faith, you get around Rich Viscardi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rich, how you doing? Hanging in there. <laughs> right? The whole earth can be on fire and cracked. Rich, how you doing? Hanging in there. <laughs> That's what faith will do for you. That's what faith will do for you. Is that right? <laughs> right? Got a, got a bunch of ladies planning for a wedding. Rich, how you doing? Hanging in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had wrong color ties that show up yesterday. Uh, Rich, how you doing? Hanging in there. <laughs> Amen. Look, you cannot defeat that kind of faith. You're not hearing me this morning, Amen. right? I'm using a little humor to open you up because you're all a little tired, right? But you cannot defeat that kind of faith. When Satan brings what he brings, 
Come on. And, and he will. And it will be at the most inopportune time. God, I tell you, water coming down out of the ceiling this morning was inopportune. Amen. Because he's looking to mess with you now. You see, if he can get me off when I'm getting into the pulpit. Come on, somebody. Amen. But listen, he's not getting me off. I've come to give glory to God. How about you? Yeah, amen. Uh, listen, I didn't come here to play patty cake with you this morning. And I didn't come here to cut your eggs, neither. Amen. This is where it gets serious. This is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Amen. We've been taking a look now these last several weeks in this series called God Becoming God Inside-Minded. Becoming God Inside-Minded. Right? Because it's important for us as born-again believers to recognize who we walk with. Right. Day Amen. in and day out. Amen. How, who do we walk with? Right. Who's with you? Amen. Isaiah 58 and 8 says, The glory of the Lord right. is your rear guard. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Woo! Yeah. We need to get that shirt. Isaiah 58 and 8. The glory of the Lord is your rear guard. And on the back of it, put, God's got my back. Because yeah. God's got your back. Amen. You're not left. You're not forsaken. Amen. Amen. Right. And the culture has come along and is trying to squeeze you into the mold of the world and how the world does things and how the world operates. Uh, I, I frankly, I wasn't surprised. I was pleasantly pleased at the number of people that said, what's the pastor doing over at the bar? <laughs> <laughs> what's he doing over there? And of course, some folks are over there like, geez, the pastor's over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but where did Jesus hang out? That's right. Right? He went and found them. Right where they were at. And I didn't go over there with my Bible, you'll notice. I just went over. And the questions started coming. Right? And there was many that I could point to about being God inside mine. But there's one that's sticking out. There's two that's sticking out, but he's not here, so I don't want to embarrass him. Uh, I was standing with Sean, right, and just loving on him because he had just gotten married. And, of course, he's thrilled because, you know, he married a really pretty girl, and that's my wife now. <laughs> I, for the rest of his days, I win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's got it now. So we were standing there talking, and, you know, he was hugging on me, and I was hugging on him. We were talking about a couple of things, and uh, a woman came up. I have no idea who she is. And she started to talk to Sean. She said, that was such a beautiful ceremony. And I don't know that she recognized me or not, but I certainly didn't stick myself in. As a matter of fact, I physically took a step back because it's his moment. You have to recognize when it's somebody else's moment. Yeah. You got to let them have the light. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just I physically stepped back and I was back here. She's like, you know, I've been to so many of these lately and there's never any mention of God because they have an officiant. That does it, rather than, and she didn't make mention of a pastor, because it was just so nice to have God be such a central part yeah. of Amen. your message. Yeah. And on the inside, I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> right? But let him, have, let him have the moment. What's my point? I have living proof from yesterday. Again, I have living proof from being down in Texas and ministering to coworkers. People are starving yes. for God. Yeah. Yeah. They're starving for what you have on the inside of yeah. you. Amen. Hallelujah. I was uh, in a room Wednesday morning uh, with, with two of my coworkers, and I love them. They're just they're great people. They help me out immensely with what I have to do. A little shout out to Nate. He said he was going to tune in this morning. And Dale. Thanks, Dale. And so we were having a conversation, and one of them was bringing up that they had a religious upbringing, as they call it. Amen. Listen, I haven't lost sight of this. We're still be talking about being God inside minded. Amen. Okay. Uh, and so they were talking about how, you know, actually their mom, his mom, mom and dad had gone on mission trips. And, you know, so that he had been around the things of God. And, and uh, Dale had been around the things of God. And there's these wonderful little community churches, uh, you know, where they live and what have you. And uh, she was sharing that um, there was a couple that they knew that were very involved in their church, and unfortunately, they ended up getting divorced. And it was almost as if one half of the church sided with him, and one half of the church sided with her, and there was all this infighting and bickering going on, and judgment and criticism and what have you. And I said to her, I said, you know, um, 
when you have people, it gets messy. Yeah. Because because yeah. we're we're flawed. Right. And you know we're not. We all haven't attained that level of sanctification that will allow us to bite our tongues and keep our yeah. mouths shut yeah. and yeah. speak blessing over people rather than cursing wow. over people. Amen. And so I shared with them the story of the prodigal. I said, you know, there was a, there's a story in the Bible that Jesus tells about a young man who turns to his father and says, I consider you dead. I want my money. Yep. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want my inheritance, and I want it now. And so um, the father obliges, which I found interesting, but he said, okay, here's your inheritance, and off you go. And that young man went out, and the Bible says he... Uh, he lived prodigally, which, you know, we, we start thinking, you know, wine, women, and song. That's not necessarily what it means. It just means he lived lavishly. He bought the best of the best. He had the best clothes, and he had, come on, he bought the best of the best. And he blew through his whole inheritance and found himself, as the Bible says, in want. You ever blow through everything and find yourself in want? <laughs> it's a terrible place to be, want. The Lord is my... Yeah. And I shall not. Want. Right? Well, he doesn't have that relationship yet, does he? Right. He's in want. As a matter of fact, he finds himself in such want that he ends up living in a pigsty with pigs, which sounds terrible to us here in the Western world, but to the Jew, pigs are unclean. You're not allowed to even touch them. And he's living with them. And he's eating what they refuse to eat. Now, if you've ever seen a pigsty, you'll know that whatever goes in there gets covered in pig slop. <laughs> and they're rejecting. Come on. And he's eating what they're rejecting. Come on, somebody. That's a mouthful of manure that you don't want to have. Come on. And uh, he, he finds himself trying to eat. The Bible calls it pods. Trying to eat what the world has to offer. Oh, let's get deep. Right? The world offers you all kinds of things. Status and position and wealth and all those types of yep. things. Right? And it's really done as a substitution for God. But he's finding out that, you know what, this doesn't satisfy and it's covered in manure. Right. And what I took, take away from that story, having come out of a life of, of drugs and alcohol, is it's amazing how after a while it doesn't seem to look all that bad. Mm. Yeah. You know, living in a pigsty, when you first show up, you're like, oh, yeah. this yeah. is terrible. Sure. Uh, really? Really? <sighs> That's awful. But after a week, yeah. what's the big deal? Uh, it's amazing how a crack house at 3 o'clock in the morning doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Or somebody shooting at you at 6 o'clock in the morning doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Right, but what I was finding out, and what you have found out, which is why you're here this morning, is that what the world offers doesn't satisfy. Yeah. And if you examine it closely enough, you'll see that it's covered in manure, right. and it doesn't smell very good. Yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So he finds himself in that position, and the Bible says he came to himself. And here's the thought that he has. He says, I will go back to my father, and I will say, I am not worthy to be called your son. Come on, we're talking about being God inside minded. Right. Not worthy to be your son. Let me be a slave in your house. Because surely, his thought process was, surely my father's slaves are treated better than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And you know the story. He has it all cooked up, right? He's, uh, and he's still working the hustle. Mm -hmm. Right? He's still trying to work his way back in. Remember doing the hustle last night? No. So he's trying to work the hustle and get back into his father's good graces. And here's what we don't know in the Western world. Here's what we don't know in, about Jewish culture. Is that because he was a son, and because he had lost all of his wealth in the Gentile world, he was coming home to face something called kazaza. Right? In, in the Jewish tradition, it means to be cut off. Right? It is a, an exceeding disgrace to lose your wealth to the Gentiles. When you go back home, your father comes out and they call the whole village together and he comes out with a clay pot and he smashes the pot at your foot. And that's literally what kazaza means. It means to be cut off. So he smashes the pot at your, at your feet and then the whole village, including the father, they turn their back on you and you're considered an outcast. You see now why he had to cook up the hustle? You see, if he's his son, he gets cut off. I'm not worthy to be your son. 
let me be a slave instead. So you see, he's got the whole hustle worked out. You with me so far? Yeah. Right? So he makes his way back to Father's house. And you know the story. The Bible says, while he was still far off, the blood of Jesus brought you near. While you were still far off, the blood of Jesus brought you near. While you were still far yeah. off, the blood of Jesus brought you near. The Father yeah. saw him while he was still afar off. Yeah. And instead of shutting the door and locking it, the Bible says he took off in a run. Yeah. And he ran towards his son. Yep. Well, that doesn't mean a whole lot to us, but let me explain that to you. You ready? Mm -hmm. In Jewish culture, over the age of 40, it is unseemly and uncouth for a man to run. Mm -hmm. When you're over the age of 40, you should be acting and conducting yourself in a very dignified manner, and so Jewish men don't run. Mm -hmm. But this father, he took off in a run. Mm -hmm. Why? That's my boy. Mm. Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. Right? Now, also in Jewish culture, and we wouldn't know this, but the, the, uh, the shirt, the chemise that they wear that goes all the way to the ground, you never are to lift it. Mm. Somebody say never. 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 Right? If you show your ankles in Jewish culture, and you're a dignified man, it's considered unseemly. Mm. Well, how many of you know in order to run, you're going to have to lift that puppy. Yeah. Right? And not just a little dabble, do you? Because you've got to get a sprint in. Right? Up over his, come on, his right. knees. Are you, are you getting a picture now? Yeah. This is the desire your Heavenly Father has for you. Right. He doesn't care what people think. Right. He doesn't yeah. care what they think about you. He is going to run and chase and come after you even while you're still far off. Right. So, Are you listening to me? Amen. So when I got through explaining that to them, the anointing of God comes and settles in the room. I know because I can sense his presence. And I said, here's the thing. She, obviously she's you know, talking about how the church is being judgmental and critical and you know, all that type of thing. I said, you know, I'm sure that the father and the son had a conversation coming back to the house, but the father does this. The son comes out with his prepared speech and says, listen, I'm not worthy to be your son. How, how many of you showed up to God's throne saying, I'm not worthy? I'm not worthy to be here. Listen to me. Shut up. <laughs> the blood of Jesus makes you worthy. Right, that's right. Yeah. The blood of Jesus cleanses you to the uttermost right. as if you had never sinned. So he comes out with his spiel, I'm not worthy to be your son, let me be your slave, and let me come work in your fields, and da-da-da, he goes, no, 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 no. Listen, put the royal robe on him. Right? Take these filthy clothes off, get the robe and put it on him. And go get my ring, my signet ring, and put it on his finger, and go get some sandals for his feet. My boy, he's come home. And a lot of that is blind to us. Can we go a little deeper this morning? Yeah. When you came into the kingdom of God, when you were washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, all those filthy rags of you doing it your way, all of your sin was taken off of you, and a robe of righteousness was placed on you. Right. And you became the righteousness of God in Christ. Right. In Him, you move and have your being. Yeah. Right. And then your Heavenly Father does this. Give them the royal ring. Give them the signet ring. Go out there and conduct business in my name. Listen, you're not getting this robe for no reason. You're to go out there and conduct business in my name. You know what we were doing at the bar last night? We were conducting business. Yeah. You know what I was doing in Texas? I was conducting business in his name. People haven't heard this. Oh, and then put sandals on his feet. Yeah. Oh, my. You see, slaves are barefooted. Sons wear sandals. Slaves are barefooted. Sons wear sandals. You've been called a child of God. Oh. Now, come into the house. We're going to have a party. Uh, we're going to kill the fatted calf. We're going to invite all the friends and all the neighbors in. We're going to rejoice. Amen. And the older brother. Yeah, uh -huh. refuses to go into the party. And this was just for her, right? 
because, you know, she was talking about how the church becomes judgmental and critical. Here is this terrible person, this awful sinner, smelling like pig, showing up at the house, and God is, you know, I mean, the, the father's, he's, he's killed the fatted calf, throwing a big party, he's lost all of his money, well, lost half of his money, because the older boy gets half the inheritance to start with, and then the rest of it is split amongst the family. So he's got his. Somebody say he got his. Yeah, yeah. You see, that's how the church acts. I got mine. Mm. I'm much better than you are. On, You're a terrible sinner. You know, I think I'm going to judge you a little bit. Maybe I'm going to criticize who you hang out with. There's some people out there right now, I can hear them in the spirit. They're throwing rocks at me because mm -hmm. you were over at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was conducting business. Yeah. I, I watched the anointing of God hit several young men last night. One of them, goosebumps coming up on his body because the presence of God is flowing on him like a river. Wow. Right? In the middle of everything that's going on, how many of you know that was a time? Yeah. I mean, come on. There was eating and there was dancing and all. And in the middle of all of that, here's the presence of God. And he's going, look, look, look. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> uh, and well, here's the older brother. He's standing outside. Dirty, no good. Yeah, you better go spend all of your day of day of judgment and criticizing and looking at you funny. Yeah, you do that. And finally, and I, you want to talk about arrogance, makes the father come outside looking for him. Listen to me, church. This is a message for you today. Because we're the church. Don't make God come looking for you. Right. Don't be so arrogant. Right. Well, I'm not going to go over here to Amen. that bar area. I'm not going to go over there to that grocery store. I'm not going to go talk to my co-worker. I'm not going to go talk to family and friends. Listen, can I give you a report? Because I was facing the right way yesterday. I, you may not know this because I was facing the right way yesterday. But I watched 100, 150. Yeah. With the exception of, let's say, a dozen get born again yesterday. Because I was watching. When we were doing communion, Jesus, I believe in you. I confess you as the Lord. I'm watching them speak these words of faith. Come on. We're conducting business. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, make me go over there and talk to you. I don't want to talk about the Lord. <laughs> don't make God come looking for you. Don't make your father come out. So the Father does. That's what I love about God. And this is the message he has for the church. He comes out and says, uh, hey, what's up? Oh, that dirty, no good, loser, rotten, no good brother of mine, you're in there having a party, and the whole time I've been here working for you and doing all this stuff, and you didn't even give me a kid goat that I could have a little celebration with my friends. You know what the Father said to him? You're all looking at me funny. The whole time you were here, you could have taken whatever you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> but your brother, my son, who is lost and dead, is now alive. Yeah. And he has come home. Yeah. Won't you come in and celebrate that one that has come home? Yeah, come on. And when I showed that to her, I said, and that is part of the, I call him Churchy Boy, the older brother. Churchy Boy, standing outside. Oh, yeah. That drug addict got saved. I had somebody online challenge me the other day, right, talking about there's no sin that God won't forgive. When I guess all those pedophile priests get off, off, off the hook. Yeah, I saw it. And I was like, and I, I, listen, I can engage, or I can just let the Holy Spirit deal with it. I opted for the latter. And say simply, yeah, if they repented, if they went to their Heavenly Father and said, what I did to those children was wrong, Forgive me. I repent of it. I will never do it again. They're going to be in a matter of fact, if I'm God, I'm putting their house right next to yours. <laughs> I'll make you get up every day and walk out there and see them. And you'll be churchy boy. Oh, dude, what are they doing in heaven? But the house next to mine. <laughs> Come on, somebody. This is the message we're bringing. And it's what I'm talking to you this morning about being God inside minded. Our foundational scripture in 1 John 4 says that you are of God. And that the greater one 
who lives in you is greater than the one who is in the world. There is a spirit in the world, and that spirit in the world is not of God. Yeah. Yeah. But you're greater. You've been created in a higher order. Those of you who have been around me a long time know, know this. Faith Bible Church is your home church. You know you're created in a higher order than Satan. And one of Satan's problems, which when the church gets a hold of this, and we, we've gotten a hold of it here, is that Satan must bow at your feet. Yeah. Oh, let me try that over here. Yeah. Right? Satan must bow at your feet. Yeah. He must. Yeah. He must. Yeah. He must. One of the biggest yeah. problems he had when he saw Adam being created in the garden, because he was there, he saw it. One of the biggest problems he had is that when God laid his pristine hands on our pristine father and blessed him and said, be fruitful, be multiplied, subdue the earth, have dominion in it, Satan at that moment knew that Adam was over him. Yeah. Yeah that he had become a subject of Adam's. And that's our position. Yeah, right. Satan is subject to us. Right. You don't like what's going on in the world? Huh? You don't like what's happening out there? What are you doing about it? Well, I'm pretty sure the government's got... Da, 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 the government is not supposed to be the source in the right. earth. Who's supposed to be the source? The church. We're, we're God's pipeline. We're, we're, we're supposed to be the source. Who's with me this morning? We're supposed to be the source in the earth. Not the government. Not religious institutions. We're supposed to be the source. We're supposed to be the pipeline that brings, come on, heaven to earth. If you grew up in a denominational church like I did, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Earth. What? Yes. What? Where? Here. Here on the earth. Yeah. As it is in heaven. Right. Well, who's the pipeline? Whoever's praying that? Yeah. <laughs> That's a dangerous prayer, frankly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The greater one is living on the inside of you. Right. And the Holy Spirit of God, who is the greater one, he lives to do the will of God. And he lives to point to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the revealer of the will of God. And so the reason that we're in this series, and this is why I get excited when it comes to doing series here at Faith Bible Church, is because it tells me we're ready for the next step. Yeah. He's training us for the next step. Why is it so important to be so God inside minded? Well, you've already heard it, but I'm going to tell you again. It's going to get rough. Mm. Yep. You go, oh, it's already rough. Mm -hmm. We warned you, the Holy Spirit warned you in December right. that 2022 was going to be a tumultuous, mm -hmm. topsy-turvy, yep. difficult and challenging year. Right. Some of you threw rocks at me. I had to get behind the pulpit. <laughs> You're supposed to preach us happy. <laughs> the Holy Spirit warned us because he wanted you to put steel in your backbone right. yeah. and not be one of those weak-minded, weak-willed right. Christians that are moved by emotions. Come on. And when you sit down with your friends and your family and your co-workers and they're moaning and groaning and complaining about inflation and gas and food prices, you're sitting right there with them going, yeah, yeah, man, it's inflation's terrible. Isn't it awful? And the price of gas, I filled up my gas tank. I had to get a, a credit check. I, it's, it's awful out there. It's fat. Instead of saying to them, oh, my God is supplying all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And, and, you know, we said this to you already. What happens when it gets to $12 a gallon, God's going to turn to you and say you're on your own? Or, are you gonna, or is he going to supply all of your needs? All of them. All of them, right? Isn't that what he said? Yep. Can you count on the content of his character? Yes. Okay. Then the Bible says that you're to cast the care of it over onto him. Yeah. One of my favorite illustrations that the Holy Spirit gave me regarding that is that, you know, uh, we have kids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, uh, my, my son in particular loves plums. Come on. Yep. And when we buy plums, he doesn't eat one. He eats plums. <laughs> what does that mean? Plums. Whatever's in the bag. <laughs> plums. <laughs> hallelujah. And in all these years, and by the way, hallelujah, 
all these years that he has been with us, he has never once turned to me and said, Father, how much do plums cost? <laughs> <laughs> what's he doing? Come on, church, what's he doing? And casting the care of the cost over onto his father. And listen to me, as his father, when I go to the vegetable market, which is fairly frequent in the summer, and I see plums, I don't go, I'm just getting two for that jerk. Because <laughs> he eats all of them. She'll, she'll tell you, because she'll say, I, I, I'll fill the bag up. <laughs> right? Listen, I'm doing a couple of things. Number one, boy, eat all the plums you want. It's my good pleasure to buy you plums. Have all the plums you want. Come on. And devil, how dare you challenge me? In the arena of money. Yeah, I will buy him all the plums he come on. Uh, and it's my good pleasure to do it. Yeah. Right? I wish he wouldn't put the stickers on the floor, but <laughs> one, one thing at a time. <laughs> Pretty good with the piss. They end up in the garbage can. It's good. Right, yeah. And the garbage can, you know, sits there for like a month and then they get all moldy. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple of things we gotta work on. Right? <laughs> they bought me this shirt, be careful, you end up in one of my sermons. Ta-da. <laughs> right? But listen, uh, we pick on, we'll pick on the young lady. Uh, my daughter the same. Go into the refrigerator, never asks me, Father, how much does the milk cost? <laughs> Just takes what she wants and come on, cast the care of it over onto me. Neither one of them are going to be, you know, hey, Father, uh, uh, how much for the plumber this afternoon to fix the piping yeah. so that I can enjoy a hot shower tomorrow? <laughs> They're going to cast the care of that over onto me. Yeah, uh, and my good pleasure yeah. to supply. Why? The greater one is on the inside. Yeah. Listen, we shouldn't get panicked. Yeah. Come on. Shouldn't fall apart. Oh, I remember times when that would happen. Oh, I guess you guys have never done that. <laughs> you never have one of those surprise bills. No? <laughs> never, 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 have, never had a pipe break behind the wall? <laughs> surprise! <laughs> right? Oh, hey, let's put a new roof on. Ta-da! <laughs> surprise! Right? Does God supply all of your need? Amen. Yeah. Or some? Oh. He supplies all. I got, a, I got a couple of you coming along. Why? He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. And he's living on the inside of you. Yeah. And he is looking to do good. He's looking to use you where you're at. Church, it's going to get darker. And he's looking to use you. He wants to turn on the flashlight. Amen. Somebody say, I'm a flashlight. Flash. He's looking to tell He said, listen, you're carrying life. Well, I tell you what, Gideon just jumped yeah. up on the inside of me. Yeah. I said, Gideon just jumped up on the inside of me. Yeah. Gideon, yeah. In, in the book of Judges, yeah. Gideon, right? He has 10,000 men that the Lord has given him. Well, 10,000 men that he's gathered to himself. Right? But if you go back to Judges 6 and you'll see where Gideon is winnowing wheat in the, in the bottom of a well. Yeah. It's got to be the funniest recorded scene in the Bible. Right? Every time every time their harvest, every time the, the Israel's harvest comes, the Philistines show up and steal their harvest. Right? So isn't that just like the devil? Yeah. You work, you you sow, you till, you plant your seed, and as soon as the harvest comes up, here comes Satan to steal your resource. Right? Right? My Bible says, however, if you're a tither, that he rebukes the devourer yeah. for your sake. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Which means that he can't touch your harvest. It means, right. and listen to me, church, I want you to get this vision. It means he has to sit on the wall and watch you go gather what God has given you. Yeah. Oh, you need a picture of him sitting on the wall wanting to get it. But you out there going, nah, 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 nah. Come on. I'm going to get all of it. So here he is. He's down in a hole in the ground. He's trying to winnow this wheat. And an angel of the Lord, capital L, appears. Jesus shows up and sits on the edge of the well and says, Hail, mighty man of valor. Is that, is that, is that a chicken sound I hear coming from the bottom? Of the is that, 
What are you doing down this hole? And listen, it's, it's a message yeah. for you. What are you doing down that hole? Yep. Trying to hide from the devil. Mm. You're supposed to be a man of courage, a woman of courage. Yeah. You've got the greater one living on the inside of you. 8%, 9%. Come on. Oh, gas is $5 a gallon. Six dollars a gallon. Pretty good chicken salad, isn't it? <laughs> why, why are you clucking like a chicken? Why are you alive? When you're an eagle. Right? You're supposed to be soaring above it. Right? He renews my strength. Amen. Like the eagle. That's right. <laughs> One of the only birds in the animal kingdom that can soar above a storm will actually take advantage of the wind and rise above the storm. Someone needs to take advantage of it. I'm preaching to some of this one. Someone needs to take advantage of this headwind that we have coming against us and rise above it. Right, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, be seated in heavenly places far above, not down in some hole. Yep. Hail, mighty man of valor. Amen. What you doing down that hole? I think God is asking his church, why are you hiding from the devil? The greater one's on the inside of you. And listen, we are all just like Gideon. And you remember launch out back at the beginning of the year, we're all just like Peter. Gideon comes out with all of his excuses. Well, God seems to have abandoned us. There's been no miracles. And uh, he says, well, you're to go in this strength of yours. Strength? What strength? I'm the smallest one in my family. I'm from the smallest tribe? No, no, no. You got the wrong. Come on. You listening to me, church? Let's stop giving God our excuses. He's already made that calculus. Yep. Huh. He's already looked at you. He's looked at your whole life. He knew your whole life before you were born. He put gifts, skills, talents, and abilities in each one of us. And he's already factored in you're going to fail. Yep. And still called you. He's already factored in where you're going to drop the ball. And he still called you. And here is his opinion of you. And here is his thoughts towards you. You're a person of courage. But you're going to have to exercise courage. How many of you know the only time you exercise courage is when you're afraid? That's right. What is courage? Doing it afraid. There is no special feeling that comes over you. <laughs> feeling. I want to feel strong, Pastor. Well, you're not to be feeling led. And you are strong in the Lord. Amen. And in the power of His might. Amen. I know who I'm talking to this morning. Amen. But none of this is in my notes, so you better get a hold of it. Right. So the Bible is very, very clear that Gideon gathers 10,000 men to himself because he's going to go out and fight the Philistines. He's going to get as big an army as he can. And here's what God says He says, You got too many. <laughs> what? <laughs> God apparently was not in school that day in military stretch, stretch, strategy, <laughs> right? Uh, how to overcome your en enemy with overwhelming force and shock and awe. Apparently, he skipped that day. He said, no, 10,000 is too many. As a matter of fact, here's the problem with 10,000. You'll take credit for doing it. Right, yeah. You'll take credit for doing it. Right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test them for you. First of all, ask them, who's afraid? <laughs> and whoever's afraid, send them home. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm kind of glad about. Listen, if you're going to be a leader, find out who's around you. Right. Find out who's around you, brother. Right. Find out. Find, find, are they going to stay in battle? Right. Or they're going to leave when it gets hot, when it gets hard. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You want to be a leader? Find out who's around you. Test them. Yes. See what they're made of. Ha Hallelujah. I remember the president of my company coming to me in my previous company, and we started talking about the fight that we were going to have to engage in, and he wanted to know, are you going to stick through the fight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> Why? The greater one is on the inside. We've got God on our side. This, we, there is no way, no how we can lose. Amen. That's who you want around you. Come on. Hallelujah. And then he says, well, you still have too many. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to test them for you. Have them go down to the water and drink. Well, the Bible is pretty clear that about 9,700 of them, whatever the number is, 
run down to the water and charge into the water and start gulping water like just... <laughs> I, I got to tell you, folks, this is one of those scriptures for years I was chewing on it. I would put uh, uh, bowls of water down in front of our dogs and I would watch our dogs drink the water. Because he said the ones that lap it like a dog. Didn't understand. I, you know, I watch and I see that, you know, sometimes a dog would look around and say, well, they're, they're vigilant. They may be drinking water, but they know what's going on around them. Right? But years later, the Holy Spirit showed it to me. Those that are being feeling led, those that are being emotion led, charge into the water. Come on. And just start gulping water down. But those that are led by the Spirit of God go down to the water, kneel down, and bring the water up to their hands in a controlled and measured way. I got my answer. I don't want people that are emotion-led. Right. Come on, I don't want people that are feeling-led. I want people that are willing to walk down to the water and drink deep. Listen, I didn't say not drink. Drink deep. Come on. But it's in a controlled fashion. Yeah. Amen. Ha hallelujah. Takes those 300. How many of you know it's a good time to be afraid? Listen, I'm just listening on the inside, going, on the inside, I'm praying, Lord, give me more. <laughs> Amen. You with me? Yeah. yeah. How many of you know it's a good time to be afraid? You had 10,000, now you got 300, you got this huge army. Right? You can't number them. You got 300. And apparently, Gideon started clucking again, but it might have been in his mind. Did you ever cluck in your mind and nobody else knew? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and so God says to Gideon, if you're still afraid, I can't remember the guy's name in the Bible, but I'm going to call him Fred. <laughs> right? I want you to go to the enemy's camp. Sure. Yeah, you see Fred. You can't, I can't say sure <laughs> preach. <laughs> Thank you for putting those up. I was wondering what they were all looking at. I thought, that, I, thought I had monkeys again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay with me. He says, if you're still afraid, go get Pura. And go and listen. Sneak into the Philistines' camp and go and listen. So you, you know the story? Right. Here, let me preach it to you. So... They creep up onto the edge and they, 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 they see a couple of sentries for the Philistines, right? They're out there guarding, right? Keeping an eye out. And they hear the two of them talking. And one of them says, I had a dream last night. And this barley loaf came rolling down the hill, struck the edge of the tent of the Philistines and destroyed it, wiped it out. And the other guy says, that's kidding me. We're cooked. I want to go back and point out the size of their army. Looking at you, the church. Mm. And that army saying, we're cooked. Yeah. Yep. We have been delivered into the hands of Gideon. Mm. Do you hear your adversary? Do you hear fear? Mm. We have been delivered into the hands of James. Mm. Do you hear lack? Do you hear poverty? We've been delivered into the hands of James. Mm. Do you hear sickness? Do you hear disease? We've been delivered into the hands right. of James. We will have no effect. Amen. So he hears that. It seems that God has a testimony about you. You're already a success. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're already victorious. Yeah. Right. Right? But there's something you're going to have to do. Hmm. You see, I, uh, maybe I, I, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and sweep under the bed. Too many Christians are talking and praying to God about delivering them from the circumstance, from the problem, from the difficulty, from the challenge. And God says, oh, no, I'm not going to deliver you from it. I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to show you that it has no effect in your life. If you'll let me show you the thing that you've been afraid of this whole time has no effect on your life. How many of you skipped a meal yesterday because of inflation? How many of you skipped a meal the day before because you had to put gas in your car? Are there people out there that are doing it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to be the source. Yeah. yeah. I said we're supposed to be the source. Are you listening to me, church? Yeah. 
Oh, that's a big problem. It's a, we have a big God. Right. Amen. You don't think God could funnel several billion dollars into your hands right now that you could pass out $20 bills of the gas pump? Yep. Woo! Uh, how cool would it be? Listen to me, church. Come on. You need to get some vision. How cool would it be to stand at the gas pump with $100 bills? Gotcha. 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 Not a big deal. Huh? Oh, I don't need that much. Not a problem. Went to the store, grab yourself some groceries. Come on. Come on. This is who we're called to be. That's right, yeah. But there's so many of them and so few of us. Good. Gideon had the same problem. He actually started off with a big number and God said, no, that's too many. You mean Faith Bible Church, we could do something like that? How cool would that be to go stand at the gas station on a Saturday and say, got you covered? Listen, let me put that up. Let me put that in. You want super duper or super de duper? <laughs> Come on. You know you want the good stuff. Come on. We're going to put the high end stuff in my car. He's got 300. And so here's what Gideon does. Listen to me, church. I don't want, to, don't, want, don't want you to miss this. He prays and he seeks God and he gets God's wisdom. Come on, he finds out what God wants done. Here's how it's going to happen. I want you to give each of them a pot. And I want you to put a candle in the pot. And give each of them a sword. And I want you to break them up into groups of 100. I want you to put them in groups of one, maybe three groups of 100. You know, God will reveal himself in three. Yeah. You know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the past, the present, the future, the spirit, the soul, the body. God will reveal himself in three. And here's what I want you to do. Gideon turns to his troops. He gives all of them a clay pot. They all put a <coughs> candle on the inside of it. They all light the candle. They all get a sword. And he says, when you hear the sound, you hear the trumpet blow, I want you to smash the pot. And I want you to proclaim the sword of the Lord in Gideon and charge in. Doesn't sound like much of a military strategy, does it? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> right? But here's what happens. The Bible records that when the sound is given, when the signal is given, they smash their pots, they all cry out the sword of the Lord and Gideon and charge in and utterly destroy the Philistines. That little puny, tiny, 300 people going up against thousands upon thousands upon thousands wipes them all out. You say, Pastor, what's the point? Remember the prodigal was facing Kazaza? Remember he was facing that broken pot? Well, the Bible says in Corinthians that all of us have this treasure in earthen vessels. What treasure? The greater one. He lives on the inside of us. You ready for the deeper? Mm -hmm. But he uses broken vessels. Right. You see, if the vessel's intact, you can't see the light, can you? Mm -hmm. Come on. But you break that vessel, and the light comes shining out. Yeah. So each of us, were broken. Yeah, right. We came into the kingdom, we were a mess. Mm -hmm. And here's what God, this is all he's saying to us. Shine the light that I've given you. Right. Become a flashlight to friends, to neighbors, co-workers. I don't recommend going and standing at the bar. Are you listening to me? It just it proved advantageous yesterday, that's all. Are you listening? Your co-workers in the next cubicle, sickness has come to their house. It's unacceptable. Right. You're to drive it off Amen. in his name. Evil reports are showing up all over the country, all over. I think people out there, they are just desperate. I think that's why the, the pond was so rich yesterday with fish. It's because people are desperate for answers. Amen. His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds very trite. Listen, you come into the kingdom of God, you get translated out of darkness and come into the kingdom of his dear son and you allow the peace of God to govern your mind, to govern your heart and ah, oh, 
He says, I anoint your head with oil, and your cup overflows. Right. Right? Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, right. and I only want when there's 8% inflation. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, and I only want when it's $6 a gallon. No, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures. Come on, church. The Holy Spirit of God, the greater one, will lead you to places of peace and of rest and green pastures in the middle of the doom and the gloom and the despair that's going on. Right? And it's not so that we can go like this and go, oh, look how great we got it. It's so we can say, look how great our God is is. Look how great our shepherd is. Right? We have the good shepherd. His name is Jesus. And right. the church is supposed to be a reflection. Right. Come on, we're the flock. We're supposed to be a reflection of the shepherd. Right. So, you know, we, we should be healed. Right. We should be blessed. Right. Well fed, well watered, at peace in our mind, at peace in our spirits, at peace. So that when we encounter those that are in the world who also have a shepherd. His name is Satan. And he's beating them. And he's stealing from them. And he's destroying their lives. He's killing them outright. We can say, oh no, no, listen. We're not here to brag about how good we have it. We're here to brag about how good our God is. Oh, by the way, um, we're still taking applications for the flock. Why don't you come on into to, to this kingdom? Listen, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're sick and tired of being beat on and stolen from, why don't you come on into the kingdom of God? You deserve a break today. Have it your way. Nike says, just do it. Come on. It's time. It's time. Cut. Listen, this is launch out. This is the work. Jesus said, come out here where the blessing is. Well, listen, blessing is people. Right. And they're waiting for us to show up right. and give them hope. Right. And not that Charlie Brown wishy-washy, <laughs> I sure do hope I got a rock. Do I remember Charlie Brown on Halloween, right, going around, get me, I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shepherd gives a kid a rock? <laughs> Come on. We have biblical hope, which is a confident, joyous expectation of something good. The greater one is on the inside of you. I have to let you go now. Didn't preach one thing out of my notes. I preached out of my spirit this morning because you needed it. You're not the small and the weak and the downcast. You're a child of God. Amen. You belong to him. Amen. And Jesus said, I, it's good for you that I go to the Father in John 14 because I'll pray the Father that he sends back one just like me. Amen. He's going to send back the Comforter, the Holy Spirit of God. And we saw that about six weeks ago when we started this back during Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes rushing back into the earth and shows up on each one of them in the upper room. I have a friend of mine who's in Jerusalem right now and sent me a video last night and he's walking through the streets of Jerusalem and he started filming the upper room from the outside. I'm sitting on the couch and I got tears running down my face. Why? Because that's the spot where Jesus, the word of God, became true. Jesus said, I'll pray for the Father to send back the Holy Spirit. You know what? It did. It happened. He showed up. Ooh, some of that. <laughs> the Holy Spirit of God showed back up in the earth, and I'm watching this from the outside, and I was stunned. That's what happened. And it's great to look back, but His presence has rolled into this room this morning. That same presence that was in the upper room is currently here, resting on you. And tomorrow, you're going to have opportunity to be Peter. Hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peter stepped out onto the balcony. I saw it. I got this. I'm fighting back tears because I can see them. These are not drunk as you suppose. Right. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> right. But this is what God promised. 
rejoiced in Joel that the Spirit would come and your sons and your daughters would prophesy. Come. Right. And the Prince of Life, whom you killed, right. said it to them, yeah. whom you killed, right. but God has raised from the dead right. to see the right. Yep. This is the message that we're bringing to the earth. God is real. He's living on the inside of me. And don't you want to come into the kingdom? Wouldn't you like to get out of the mess that you're in? And hang out with a whole bunch of people that are just messed up. Amen. Hallelujah. You better stand to your feet. I can go for another hour. Glory to God. Woo! Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Oh, Father, we bless you this morning. Oh, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. And thank you for these that you've called to this place. Now, God, let your face shine upon them. Uh, give them peace. In the name of Jesus, strengthen them for the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So me and the team are heading to Pennsylvania tomorrow.